Hi there folks, my name is NovaWing24 and welcome to another little review of a FSX product. So today we're going to be looking at the Commercial Level Simulations DC-10 HD, uh, also available from the from Just Flight uh, under their F-Light series. So um, previously I have looked at uh, the C the original CLS uh, DC-10 release uh, from them uh, and then uh, subsequently uh, they've rebooted it uh, as a uh, HD version, uh, so offering uh, better quality liveries and internals. So we're going to see what the difference is. We're going to compare it and uh, have a little bit of a quick little flight tour. We're just going to be going today from uh, from Edinburgh to Manchester. I think I'm going to Manchester. Yeah, uh, Manchester or Glasgow. Manchester. And uh, we're going to be doing this quick little flight just to see what the difference is and see how we go from there. So Alrighty, so first off, um, the externals. So the externals, yes, okay, the textures are better. Yes, a absolutely. Um, so for a, for a start, the textures have been improved significantly. So um, that is a, a, a big plus uh, straight away uh, for this release over the last one, was the fact that, uh, yeah, the, the textures were a little bit, you know, naff because uh, it was designed for FS9 um, as well as being FSX. So uh, this is a FSX P3D design design this one so uh, the quality of the textures have improved um, interesting enough uh, they've rebooted many of the liveries as well that was part of the original pack uh, were included once again with this reboot so unfortunately though um, you are not eligible you don't appear to get any discount um, if you do already own um, the original one of their DC 10 uh, so yeah you're kind of stuck paying full price uh, if you do want to upgrade to this uh, new aircraft so there you go all right. Uh, let's uh, now that we've had a look, quick look at the outside, and um, we've seen you know that we've got the uh, the lights are a bit of improved. Like we've even got the uh, pop out uh, landing lights and stuff like that now. And uh, it looks like they've redone the animations for the engine as well, which is nice to see as well. So there you go. Uh, all right. So what we're going to do now is we are going to jump into the office, and we're going to have a quick look around that. All right. So as you can see, the office is significantly different um, from what it was in the original release. So we actually have a cockpit that actually is um, worthy of payware now, and not um, something that's just you know thrown together um, from various elements as it was uh, in the original release. So we've actually got gauges that actually look like they belong in the aircraft. Um, we and positioning of it that's more in line with the actual aircraft as it was. Uh, interesting enough, we do still have the FMC, so it's a, an early model FMC is present there, though it is not required to sort of uh, do, anything, do anything with the flight, but uh, yeah, it's, it's all worth knowing as well. Still got your steam-driven uh, uh, gauges as well, which is always uh, fun and uh, nice to see as well, so there you go. Um, so as I was saying before, you've got the pretty much uh, just the normal um, your primary flight display. As it, it just looks so much better than the previous release did. It really does. Um, it actually looks like something that you actually wouldn't mind getting into, and 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 that's a a, a big deal. Um, it really is. So oh, what happened there? There we are. Um, so yeah, we've got the FMC there, throttle quadrant, uh, your center consoles and stuff like that as well. So it, it is it is definitely looking a lot better, uh, definitely a lot... You know, the, I, I think, you know, it's easy to say it was better than the last one, because the last one was a bit meh. It, it really was, but uh, yeah, now we've got something that actually looks like it actually uh, belongs in a payware hangar, which is nice to see. All right, so enough of me uh, gaffing away. So let's um, let's uh, commence our pushback. We've uh, we've seen our uh, jetway uh, tuck itself away. So now we're going to start our pushback, and then we're going to head out and depart from this wonderful airport here at Edinburgh. Definitely, just does look uh, a lot better than uh, than the previous version does it really not that that was probably hard but yeah it definitely uh, feels like a lot more uh, worth the investment now it really does all right so now that we've uh, finished our pushback uh, let's uh, start our taxi so uh, we're going to use uh, two four for our departure today taxi along here
derp. Random little luggage vehicle. That's different. I haven't seen that before. Anyway, uh, in the meantime, let's uh, taxi uh, down to Fort Tough Runway. That was, that was a random little event that I saw there at uh, NFSX. Haven't seen those around very often, but anyway. Alright, so uh, let's uh, taxi down, as I said, down to our departure runway. And uh, for those who've been watching, who know uh, who know me, the um, yeah, the the whole uh, FMC and I are, are not very uh, we're not we're not very uh, we we don't get on very well. So it's it's nice that this one uh, still has the uh, just the straight four back. Uh, on taxiway, on taxiway. Thank you very much, Russ. Uh It does have the ability to sort of program a GPS flight plan, and uh, and off you go for that one. Approach here to runway two four. Approaching two four. Approaching two four. All right, cross on to two four. Yeah, Ras sometimes seems to. Uh, uh, it's obviously that voice in the background. Uh, Ras. Two four flaps flaps. Sometimes you can seem annoying, but other times it's uh, it's kind of cool. All right, okay. Go for uh, flaps two takeoff. All right. Now we'll just make sure everything's set. Now uh, I've already uh, dialed in the. I've already loaded my uh, flight plan into my GPS. Uh, I set the GPS mode on that one. Now I've got dialed up our altitude and uh, dialed up the speed. Alright, looks like we are ready to go. It's, yeah, it, look, pressing buttons and this kind of like thing is it's, it's one of the things about uh, flying the some yeah, flying the tube liners that sometimes are a little bit eh about. But you know what? Uh, people like it. Let's see what it's like. Okay. Powering up. Rolls forward. And brakes off. Very, very majestic, um, the DC-10. It really, really is. Just, it's just, yeah, it's always, it's very reminiscent of a, of a bygone era of aviation. It really is, and just impressive to see. And, and, and you know what? I, I'm having, already, I'm having a lot more fun with this than I was with the, uh, the original release. So that's a, that's a good sign. Alright, so, now that we've uh, done our takeoff, of course the usual thing that we do with uh, airliners, now we start pushing buttons rather than flying airplane. Uh, okay, alright, let's uh, autopilot on. Yeah. Altitude hold. Altitude climb. Seventeen thousand GPS All right, I think that looks about right and speed hold on. Considering that I've blown th way through the safe speeds on this one. Alright. Yep, I can wipe that master caution out now. Yep. 
think we can afford a slightly higher uh, looks about right there we go okay and we're on our way and uh, let's move those lights tuck those lights back in And there we are. So, th so far, this uh, version is a lot nicer, a lot cleaner than the previous release that I looked at. So, um, yeah, already we can see that the textures are far, far better than they were. Uh, and along with that, the, the interior and exterior modeling just look a lot better and just seem to behave a lot better, which is you know, nice to see. And definitely something that was, yeah, very disappointing with the, uh, the, the their first release. But, you know, it, it's good. Now, this, uh, as I said, this is available under two different um, streams. So you can either buy this uh, direct from as a commercial level simulations product, um, or alternatively, you can buy it um, from the guys that uh, just fly it as part of their F-Flight range. So uh, you have both options available to you. Um, and it's uh, for your purchase options for this aircraft, should you choose to invest in it. Alright, so as we've established our uh, cruising altitude here, gives us a chance to uh, have another uh, look over the exterior and uh, see some of the other features on the interior as well. Uh, so again, I, I do want to commend CLS on, on the fact that you know of you know w when you've done a reboot, you've you've done a reboot right. You know you've actually gone through and actually redone the textures and make sure that you know they actually look the part and actually you know you you put uh, you know a lot more specular on there, which is nice to see. Uh, and uh, and redoing the the liveries liveries that you had in your original release is good. Um, I, I question whether you, why you still have your old version available. I do kind to question that um, it just seems a bit odd but you know anyway uh, but other than that no it is good to see that you know you guys have actually you know done a reboot um, and actually you know, put a, a, a lot more work um, into this one than it looks like yeah you did uh, yeah I'm not going to take away from the fact that I'm sure a lot of work went into the first one but the fact remains is is that it doesn't seem that way whereas uh, in this one, you can actually see that there was a, a lot more work went into it, and you know the, the results are very much plain to see. So uh, this is a, another really good uh, airline for me. It, it sort of um, puts, you know, crosses, you know, sort of bridges that gap between somebody who wants to have, you know, the full insane everything clicking, and as it does, you know, as you get in PMDG and uh, Majestic's uh, Q400. Um, along, but you know, bridging the gap between that, but it give you a good introduction to systems um, and some of the basic systems that you get with tube liners and stuff like that. For if you do want to uh, fly them for some of your flights, so it's it's a nice balance. And and you know what, so far I I'm, I'm definitely more impressed with this than I was with the uh, your first release. That's for sure. And one of the other features uh, that is uh, in this one as well, which wasn't so much in the last one, uh, was that uh, you get uh, as I said amazingly but far better models uh, copied as you can see here it just looks the part again we've got the full the jump seats we've got everything looking the part of a modern airliner and of course uh, the other part you get as well is you get uh, the full flight engineer station which is fully clickable as well um, so if you ever don't want to have your uh, flight recorded not the, the you know for example all clickable does there does everything in there as well so you can actually sort of turn you know flight recorders on and off and stuff like that uh, and you um, it will sort of illuminate when things uh, need your attention and stuff like that so it, it really is good to see and I oh, forgot to turn the gallery uh, gallery of power on there you go. Uh, so the galley's got power now. Oh, better be serving the snacks. So uh, it, it is good to see that this has been modelled in some pretty impressive detail as well, and actually just gives you that little bit more um, than it did previously. But also not so much that it is you know completely overwhelming and you just do not want to fly airliners ever again. Uh, so that's uh, nice to see. And overall, I, I'm a lot more impressed with this than I was with my last one. So, that's pretty much uh, going to be me waffling on. I haven't really got much else to say. The DC-10 uh, was uh, an amazing airliner um, and still serves in its freighter variant um, to this day, actually, in many airlines. And some smaller airlines, uh, some uh, more far-flying airliners, do still use uh, the DC-10 DC on passenger routes. But I, I do want to say 
I have one issue with the reboot. Um, so in the original release, you got your freighter variants, you got your passenger variants of the whole family of DC-10. So you've got um, the Dash 10s, the Dash 20s, so the Dash 10s, Dash 30s, Dash 40s in both their passenger and their freighter models. You got the whole lot. You also got the KC-10 um, uh, air-to-air refueling variants, both the uh, USAF ones, the United States Air Force ones, uh, and the Air National Guard ones, along with the privately run Flight Refueling Company Limited and also uh, a, a Dutch... Uh, run company as well for private contracting which does contracts for the Royal um, Netherlands Air Force they are not here this time like some people say you know oh it's because it's a civilian airline it's not supposed to have the British you know, the military um, implications of it yeah okay no sorry no no it, it's it's what makes the DC-10 so iconic is the fact that it was used both for civilian and military applications. And something as, you know, big a deal as having the, the KC-10, you know, in it, the fact that you didn't put it in there, CLS, again, I kind of have to question your choices there. I really kind of do, because it's a case of, well... You put it in there last time, why didn't you put it in there this time? Like, you've obviously come a long way as a developer. Like, you know, this work is far, far superior over your earlier releases, and I highly commend you on that. Great work. But why did you take the KC-10 out? Like, what possessed you to do that? I, I'm, I'm really genuinely curious here, because it just seems like such an odd thing to do, because it is so well-known... Uh, and such a fundamental thing, aircraft, um, that it just seems odd that you chose not to put it into this particular one, and, and I don't quite understand why you did that, so, mm. anyway. Uh, so that's my sort of little, you know, that my, my biggest beef with it is the fact that, yeah, it, it you, that you took out what, for me, is probably a, a fundamental reason to fly it, um, you know, I, I it just, yeah, I, I like that kind of stuff, and, and I just think that, You've obviously learnt so much as a simulator, as a simulation developer. Why did you take it out? And I'm very curious to know the reasons why. But anyway, all right. Well, that's pretty much enough of me waffling on uh, for the flight. So uh, we're going to be uh, continuing on the flight here. Um, we're going to be coming back to this video as I come in to approach onto our final destination. So see you shortly. Alrighty, so here we are. We're coming in on finals to uh, our airport. Now, today we was, I actually planned for Newcastle, so there you go. It's one of the things that when you do uh, so many videos, sometimes you're just not even sure what the de what your destination is. But that's okay. We're uh, we're coming in now. So uh, we've got the localizer. We're coming in a little bit below the glide slope. Flaps. Flaps. Too fast. Too fast. Yeah, I know. Alright, we're coming in. I said a little bit below the glide slope, but uh, we'll get there. Alright. Better watch that descent, right? Lights all on. Bit to the right of the airport. They're gonna come in quite nicely, I think. Flaps. We might might be annoying some of the uh, the houses on the way in uh, for this one. That's all right. that speed because I think I'm bordering right on stall at the moment. And should be 
just about right. There we go. Spoilers out. And reverse. And there we are, safely down. How about that? Alrighty, so there we are. We have uh, landed and arrived safely, and we're all good to go. So, overall thoughts. Well, pretty much, um, it's like comparing chalk and cheese. It really is. So, previously, when we had uh, the previous uh, iteration of this, it really wasn't too good. But this version is is just absolutely vastly superior. It really is. It is just incredibly superior. It's so much more impressive um, than the first version. It's definitely come a long way, and it shows the 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 distance that uh, CLS simulate uh, that commercial level simulations have come as well. Um, it does provide a nice balance between complexity of systems along with uh, the actual sort of you know being able to it, along with the ease of accessibility as well. So, a nice combination. Overall, a lot more impressed with this than I was with the last one. Uh, definitely means that I'm, I might be a little bit more interested in, uh, in tube liners, but uh, you never know. My only complaint... Feet remaining. Thank you very much. Uh, my only complaint um, is, as I said before, was simply the fact that why they chose to take out um, the the KC10 versions, I I don't really understand why that was done. Um, I really don't understand. Um, I really just don't understand why they chose to remove those. I really don't get it. It just seems to me to be a bit odd, and. I just think that they missed an opportunity there to again prove how far they've come as a developer. So don't get me wrong, this is this one's very very good. Um, but yeah, I just think that they they missed a golden opportunity there as well. They really did. But hey, you never know. All right, as we uh, turn into uh, our gate here, thank you very much for joining me. Don't forget, as always, folks, that uh, you can always... Uh, well, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to the channel if you enjoy these videos and want to see more. And, of course, as always, you can always find me and all the things I'm up to between videos by finding me on Facebook and on Twitter. Just search NovaWing24. All right, folks, thanks very much for watching. Take care, safe skies to all, and we'll see you next time. Bye for now.